We've evolved because we're compassionate. You know, it's the compassionate people that survived, that took care of each other, and that were kind of hardwired for compassion, even though, you know, sometimes we think we're not, and we, we get kind of lost in our sense of isolation and individual kind of self, that um, what all these practices do is remind us that we're connected and remind us that compassion compassion is just what makes sense. I mean, the way I like to think of it is it's not this kind of top-down moral thing that you should do the right thing. The way I think it's more powerful is when it's kind of a bottom-up, like an experience where you start to recognize we're all connected. You know, if, if I had a splinter in my left hand, what would my right hand do? Take it out. And my left hand wouldn't say, oh my God, you're so generous, you're so compassionate, thank you. It just, it just knows I'm part of the same body. Of course I would do that. And that's how compassion is. It, it just makes sense when you see it that clearly. Passion and empathy look very different in the brain. So compassion actually fills us with positive emotions. It lights up our reward center because we're caring about someone. We're saying, I want your suffering. I want to help you. Empathy lights up the pain centers, right? You see someone stub their toe and you're like, oh, ow, right? So it lights up the pain centers. So compassion fatigue is actually a misnomer. It should be called empathy fatigue. You can't get tired from too much compassion. It is filling you up with love. So empathy is the gateway for compassion. We need to understand someone's suffering. And then what we need to learn how to do, and this is why your work is so important, is we need to learn how to transform that empathy into compassion so that we move into more positive emotions. And then it absolutely, it protects you.